So I got into the recent Blue Protocol closed beta test, or stress test. The experience was pretty much the same as the previous closed beta, except this time we only had like three hours, whereas the last time we had a few days. So of course I didn't get to explore as much as last time, and also you were confined to the town and in instances for the stress test. Before we move on though, a very big thank you to LavaMob1. This user hit me up in Discord and offered me their account because their specs couldn't run the game and they got invited. And so that's how I got to play. But a few others also offered me their account. And I just want to say thank you very much, guys. You're absolute saints. I had a bunch of caffeine and stayed up 24 hours just so I can play through this beta because for once in my life, I finally fixed my sleep schedule. But then this beta came out and it was like, no. <laughs> You're in Japanese time now, boy. Anyway, I'm just gonna run you guys through what I experienced as I'm sure many of you are interested in this game and just wanna know about it. Plus, I love talking about Blue Protocol because I'm very excited for this game. So we start off with character customization and it seemed to be the same as last time, except they did add a few more options, a more busty female body type which includes jiggle physics. Options to choose from with parts like eyes and hair. And I decided to mess around with both male and female, making a smaller male character since we made a default male in the alpha and a busty female since we played a more default body type in CBT1. Skipping ahead, they gave 200 GC, guild coins or whatever it's called, I don't know, I call it GameCube, I'll put the proper term on the screen. But this is a currency that can be used for costumes and things like that. So I customized both my characters. And here's just me showing off some of the outfits. And I don't believe they added anything new from the last beta. So same accessories, same hats, jackets. Things do change though from male and female appearance, obviously, but the outfits are the same and can be used on both sexes. And then the servers crashed for about 30 minutes. I thought that it was my fault. I thought I did something wrong because I tried to use a teleporter and then it just froze. Luckily, I found someone else streaming the game on YouTube and they had the same exact issue. It's just the timing was really odd because the servers crashed once I hit the teleporter. But I was like, no, tell me I didn't stay up this long just for this beta to get pushed to another day. Because by that time, the caffeine had kicked in and I was like, oh fuck, I can't sleep now. There was a very tight schedule for this. It was a stress test. This is to test the queuing and just a bunch of players doing things at once. A smaller amount of players were invited to this beta than last time, but probably more people queuing up for the same instances at the same time than, you know, it's ever happened in the previous beta. So there was a very strict schedule, whereas at this time you queue for this dungeon and then it's closed off. And at this time you queue for this arena. And so we missed a dungeon because that was supposed to happen at 7.30. And the server issues continued until I think 8 or 8.30, and so we skipped to the next one, which was the pillar dungeon. And if you wanna see these dungeons in more detail with the full playthrough or explanation of the bosses and my overall experience, I have separate videos on those. There will be a playlist linked down below and at the end of this video. And there's a card on the screen if you just wanna go watch it right now. And so right before we queued for the pillar dungeon, I was trying to rush and customize my female character as quickly as possible. And since I had just finished the customization, 
when it was time to queue for the dungeon, I forgot to equip my stronger weapon and forgot to fill my two summon slots. Regardless, I think I was the only one in the party familiar with this dungeon because the other players seemed a little lost. And the dungeon functioned the same as last time, at least from what I remember. And similar to last time, the dungeons in this game give you a lot more freedom than dungeons in other games. And take that however you will. That's not meant to be a good or bad statement. So for example, you have Final Fantasy XIV, where you always stay as a group, and you focus on the same enemy or pack of enemies for most of the time in the dungeon. And there's all these mechanics and things like that. But it's very important. Every role is very important, and you stick together, and you focus on the same thing. Whereas in this game, everyone can kind of run off on their own. Not like one player's on the third floor while one's on the first. It's just like, when you enter an area where there's enemies, it's very spaced out. Players will just go and take on their own enemy or own group of enemies. Now I think if you're playing with friends, or you're in comms, to optimize your experience, you're probably going to pull them or focus them in a group. But when you pug it, everyone's just off on their own. Every class seems to have some kind of support for themselves, and there doesn't seem to be one dedicated to healer in this game. So I would say there are roles, but it's not as important as your usual trinity system. Maybe at some point, but for now, every class can take care of themselves. Personally, I both like and dislike this. The freedom's nice, and I've spoken on this in other videos. I just want your role as a player to feel a bit more important. It doesn't have to be specific to play a role like DPS or anything like that, but it would be nice to see some of the future dungeon mechanics or fights introduce something more complex, more stimulating. But then again, take all of this with a grain of salt because this is just one of the very, very early dungeons in the game. Like, this is probably not even scratching the surface of what is to come for Blue Protocol. We're not even that far into the story, and this is just one of the early dungeons, and pretty easy as well. And overall, I really enjoyed my experience with this game every time I play it, so don't take this as like a bad thing. Just giving you guys my impressions. Since I'm sure a lot of you watching haven't played it yet, and you can't gather all this information from just the few clips I'm showing. And after that, there was another small grace period and we queued up for arenas. And no, these are not PvP arenas. The enemies are tanky as hell and players and enemies are spread out all over the place for the majority of the fight. And if you wanna set some kind of record and complete this as fast as possible, it'd be best not to queue with randoms. But of course we were testing the LFG system because that's the point of the stress test. So I'm just saying this for a future reference when the game does release. So arenas with randoms are gonna take a few minutes longer because you just don't have that organization, you know? Uh, but if you play with friends or communicate in comms, then you can do things like group the enemies up, wait till everyone's ultimates are off cooldown and just burst a pack of mobs together. After that, the raid test was coming up and I decided to do a quick stream and answer some questions live. Why not? What was odd is that it threw me in the middle of the fight when the boss's health was already cut down like 30%. And I either sucked ass or the Twitch chat was distracting me as usual because God, 
damn, I was getting tossed left and right. And the summons and ultimate animations were more distracting than usual. Plus you add the screen shake, which is just fucking chaotic. The screen sometimes looks like the 4th of July during these raids. And I don't know if that's something players have complained about, but one thing I would like to see in the future is maybe adding a setting where you can control others' effects, like in Black Desert. That would be a really nice addition to the game. Look at me, class ranking, number two. Holy shit, I feel like I was getting my ass whooped. So overall, this was very similar to my CBT1 experience. I've been dying to play this game. Any chance I get to play it, just hearing that music in the town, just, just entering the world of Blue Protocol, it feels so nice. So yeah, I was very happy that I could play as far as like new features and things like that. There wasn't much that was really new, except maybe with the character customization that I noticed. As far as a release date, we don't have anything set in stone, but I do believe the game is set to release in 2021. Seeing that they're doing a stress test already is a very good sign of the game's progress. There is some more information that I have about this game, but I want to make sure it's a bit more concrete before I make a video on it. Also, a big thanks to my partners exit lag because I wouldn't have been able to play this game without them. Most other VPNs are still blocked by games like Blue Protocol. So having exit lag has allowed me to not only play Blue Protocol, but to play a ton of other games in other countries without issue. So little plug here, but there is a link down below and you guys can get a three day trial to try exit lag and you don't need a credit card. So if you don't like it, fuck it. And if you want to watch more Blue Protocol content, I have a whole playlist of my time in the alpha and the beta and i think you'll enjoy those videos with all that being said thank you for watching and i will catch you all in the next video see you soon friends